Welcome to Liberty Dad Podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues. During this episode, we'll discuss Social Security and the environment. If you are new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time. And Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local Libertarian City Council candidate Jerry Rohrbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb or just Tubb. Pastor Tubb, a father of three, shares the same vision I do when it comes to communicating liberty. Prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for this season of the Liberty Dad podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from this book, Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed about how libertarians view Social Security and the environment. With that, we go to Tub. Tub, hey, how are you today? I'm All right, so here's the thing. Every time during the intro, and it kind of hit me that you, know, you say that this is the conversation we want to have with our kids. And I'm like, I don't have a conversation like that. And I go, wait a minute, I do. Mine is different. Because my kids are basically 26, 25, 24 years old. Right. So I have a different type of conversation than you will have, especially right now, with right. a three-year-old. He's three. And I mean, I, might I, act like three-year-old sometimes, but... I talk to him about Social Security. Oh, good. All right. So, well, he's, you, know, so you want to bring him up here? I just I just let him know. I'm like, don't expect it. <laughs> right. Yeah, dude, it's not happening. Like so, it's a, so but, but it's funny that, like, I, every time I you I actually told that, him the other day, I said, you know what, son? I, I, he was three, he's three, of course. I was like, you know what, buddy? I was like, I, I want to tell you a joke about Social Security, but... You're not going to get, get it. Because <laughs> he's so free. this will actually he's not going to get it because he's free and yeah, this will be scary. the shortest episode ever. I love this. That I'm, this that you saw how excited he just was over that right there. That that is a shame that this is where we are. I mean, this is and I got a feeling it's not going to get better. That was a good joke. It's re, it it was great. I mean, it like went two different ways. I mean, that was like deep. That. It did work in two different ways. You could take it whichever way you wanted. That you, oh, he won't get it because you know he's three, and, and he's he not going to get, get it because it it's Social Security. Right, like, gone. Like, all right, so bam, like mm. all right. So all I was saying was I wasn't talking about really bad jokes. I was talking about the conversation that's just different. Saying. All these from comedians my, are dying lately. I, somebody got to fill in for him. It probably won't be you. <laughs> I think we're going to keep looking around and we're going to see how that appreciate the vote of confidence. Now you know what's funny? The jokes that you tell like that. You could be the Bob Saget, but not the Bob Saget that he did with his live shows. The Bob Saget he was on Full House. Oh, oh. like you could be that version of Bob Saget. Could I jokes. be the Bob Saget that had like all the young women by you know on his arms and stuff? Cash your wife. You know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what are we covering here? All right. So we're gonna cover. <laughs> I should have stopped you thirty seconds before that. Hey, you know what? You never. But she know. doesn't watch this anyway, does she? No, she doesn't care about politics. That's true. All right, fair enough. All she wants to know is when are you getting paid. And I'm like, am I supposed to be paying you for this? Wait, 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 wait. That's a good what idea. have you been be telling careful, her? Be careful what you suggest, because she'll be like, you know, that's a good idea. You know, he does come over and take your time. Right. All right, go ahead. Um, so we're gonna talk about Social Security and the environment. Uh, there are probably there's probably not much there really that's no, it's, the same. We shouldn't take. We're long. just trying to kind of wrap it up, and we're like, you know, some of these topics maybe we spend too much time on them, and we could just kind of get through them quicker. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, the goal was just to give people an idea of what libertarians, you know, how they. <clears throat> how they see some of these topics. And it's funny because I just made a tweet recently and uh, somebody had tweeted something and they said, uh, is this guy named Dan Price. He's like a popular, he, he owns like a bunch of businesses and he only pays his employees like some certain level of money or something like that. Okay. And then he advocates that everybody else do it too. You know, okay. kind of one of those, you know, but by law and all that. And he's, so he's kind of like one of these left leaning type of oh, business owners. Oh, uh, because you know, there's a restaurant that did that and they said they don't, they don't take tips at all. There's no tips. Oh yeah. You don't tip. You don't tip your waiter. It's given in their right. pay. They're treated well. And right. like, no, we don't expect a tip. And and well, he he does. He he runs his business in a particular way. Okay. And then boast about it, and then starts making arguments why everybody else should do it or be okay. compelled to do it. Right. And uh, so he had made a tweet that went something like, um, uh, "We should reduce poverty by oh he said we should reduce crime." 
here's an idea. Let's reduce poverty. And so then I retweeted and I said, we should reduce poverty. Here's an idea. Let's reduce regulations. Um, what did I say? I said regulations. Uh, I said three things. Crap. I can't remember what I did. Okay, oh, because uh, you know the problem is when you make a statement like that, you assume it's only poor people who are committing crimes, and, and that's well, just not true. Well, so uh, if you I, go along with that thinking, right. I know that's not your point, but that's kind of. Okay. I think I think I said like end the drug war. I I said three mm -hmm. different things, yep. and then I was like, well, that's that's three things I said, but three solid ideas. <laughs> hey, and start going down the line if you want. So where that ties in with this? So somebody, some random person on Twitter saw it, happened to see it, and said. Uh, they said, oh, what, you don't think we should have regulations? What, you don't think we should have this? What about this? What about this? And I was like, I got you, man. I did a whole episode on regulations. And Indeed. Then I, and then I put my I put my, our episode where we talked about regulations uh -huh. in there for him to watch or him or her or whoever it was. Right. And so I don't know if they watched it. I don't know, you know, whatever. Well, probably not because they, they just want to make a statement pretending Maybe. they're right and not Maybe. actually listen but, to But it was an opportunity to promote this. So, okay. you know, like this, that's what this was for. Like I wanted to do all these different topics so that when people are like, well, yeah, you libertarians, you don't want somebody to have welfare because you just want to step over their bodies while they're poor and hungry. And I'm like, I do not want to have to go through the effort of stepping over somebody's body. Like, goodness gracious, but, that's too like, much work. But the, the thing but is, that's not even my, like, like what we want ultimately is just to shift everything from the government to the, to private, the private sector. That's and, really and, what it all amounts and, to. And the, and the thing is, this is once again, we talk about accountability stuff and all, and we're going to get there. Um, but my point is just that, is that, you know what, government's involved in so much mm -hmm. and we've learned that they don't do such a great job with it. Right. And, and here's what I really like. I like the idea of having the conversations because here's what I found. Once you start talking to somebody, ideas will flow and then you can start winning. You can start kind of winning them over and then in the winning them over, you start going, okay, well, how about this? And mm -hmm. then you start coming up with ideas because I, I don't think that one person is intended to have all the answers. Right. But the more you start, the more you can make them go, oh, wait a minute, that makes sense. Right. Okay. Now they start asking a different kind of question. Now they start asking like, okay, well, how do we make that work? Right. And I, man, I will have those conversations with somebody all right. day. I don't want to have to spend my time arguing. Listen, dude, I can tell you right here why this idea is better. Right. Let's see how we can kind of work through this to get us to this point. Right. Like as libertarians, we have these end games. Like mm -hmm. We want to have these big, long goals down the road. And we have to kind of take some small victories here that move us down that road. Right. So you want to read about Social Security, huh? Yeah. So, okay. well, well, we will get there. No, we're not, we're not in a big rush. I mean, um, we have but, another 12 but I, but and a half I, minutes. But I think I think the I think the the you know, the the point here is. Is that we um, we have these conversations and we put them on film and then we can point people to them exactly. and say, yep. "Hey, check this out. This we talked about this. We talked about Social Security. We talked about the environment. Mm -hmm. We talked about you know welfare and we talked about um, uh, you know foreign policy and war and yeah, all." We're these coming near the end here. We're coming near yeah, the end. Yeah, I mean, yep. so we've literally got twenty five issues out there that anybody can go out there and be like, you know, what do you just get a good sense of it. Like yep. if you, you know, you don't have to go, but you don't have to be like, all right, read this big philosophical book and then you'll understand. It's like, no, just come watch the show and, you know, pick a topic and bam, and, now you and, have a little bit of better understanding. we will break it down for you. We will break it down. Now, the I will disagree. That we are. I will disagree with you. You said there's no one person that should have all the answers, but that actually doesn't apply to podcasters or candidates. Oh, because we're supposed to have all the candidates answers. are supposed to have all the answers because that's what people expect. And podcasters are just blowhards. Oh, well, then I'm failing. So, because I listen, I've been very clear. I say, listen, I, I don't believe I have to always have the answers. Well, I'm not a good I politician. To, I, no, not at all. Um, is that I, but I, because here's what happens I know that there are people a lot smarter than me. And you know what's funny? I also mentioned the other day, I said, listen, not you, people, <laughs> like people I don't know in my circle, I'm the smartest. No, so, but like I said, you know what's funny? I said, it, it's funny that so many times somebody who's been doing the job for 30 years mm -hmm. knows that job better than the boss. I said, or sometimes you get great wisdom from the people who are standing on the street corner just on life for a while. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Is that we have to learn that sometimes wisdom comes from places we wouldn't expect it to come from. Right. And, but so what I want to do, even as a candidate, and then when I do get in office, I don't think we have to find the people who are always on the news to get the answers. Right. And what I mean by that is, you know, you have civic leaders and stuff like, oh, we got to go find them. No, you don't. Go in the neighborhoods right. and talk to the people who are actually involved in the issues. Then you get some real stuff. So as far as I go as, as being a candidate, I say, listen, I don't have to have all the answers. Right. We have to be willing. To, I have a starting base. Like, okay, mm -hmm. I believe this. Right. Now let's work from here. We'll start getting people to help give information to how we get to there. Right. That could be anybody. Yep. Even you one day. Even me what? Even you might be a source of information one day. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. I thought you were going to say even me would have to go out and talk to people to learn about stuff. I mean, no, you don't have to learn anything. You're good. No, I'm talking about the talking to people part. 
that you don't want to talk about. There's a reason why I'm yeah, that's why you do this. And, yeah, this like, is why you have this little room that we sit in. Right, and, right. Okay, all right. Like you don't see crowds of people that I have to like, you know, actually talk interact to. with. Yeah. All right. I'm a libertarian. We're not good with people. That's, there's you know, there's a little belief inside libertarian circles that there is a belief we're not going to perpetuate that belief. We are no, going to talk we about do that. social security. Okay. So let's put it up on the screen here. And uh, let's see, let's let's get some stuff going here. Let me change a couple things here real quick so that we can see what we're doing. Basically, folks, what I'm doing is what I should there have already had done. So, bam, there it is. You can't see it, but we can see it because we're looking Everything at it. Everything changed. Everything's we're looking new at right now. That's yep. what. You oh, know, that I'm is looking. the downside. You're right. You know, it's funny. I don't pay attention to us. I pay that's attention. I, I, <laughs> oh, you oh, can touch the words. Right, I can't. Right I'm there. sure. Oh, you know how like they do in those um like uh, TikTok videos and stuff? And they'll, they'll just put, like, they'll put verbiage oh, up yeah. top. They put, and they'll, and they'll like, just do... Oh, hey, I and, and then they way. play music and they're yeah. like... Yeah, so, whoops. So play some music and I'll just do right. that. And this will be our TikTok video. Yep, First ahead. TikTok video. Right there. <clears throat> All right, Social Security. What a... This is what the book said, by the way. Just for anybody that's listening that has not been... That is not Let me see if I got this right. Hold, you just said for anybody who's listening and you're going to hold the book that's up. That's listening in. That's <laughs> not... That is not... It was two part. That okay. is not familiar with other episodes. We are going through the book and in this book... Uh, the gentleman goes through 25 different issues and he puts out a sentence or two about each topic. And we just expand upon it and see if we can, you know, add more clarity, say something insightful, whatever, you know. And uh, so here we're going to talk about Social Security. What a big mistake starting this program was. It's just intergenerational theft. Even worse, it's basically a Ponzi scheme that causes each generation to feel more abused than the last. Do you feel more abused than your parents? Yeah, because they actually got some of it. Oh, okay. Well, well, actually, hang on. I just lied to you. I lied to you. Um, my father, my mother died too young. Okay. Which is part of the issue with Fair. Social Security. Right. right. And then my fa- actually, you know what? I don't know if my father ever got Social Security because he retired and then he died at 64. So, you know what? I don't think my parents ever got it. Gotcha. Just because they died young, though. And, uh, and unlike, say, uh, some other savings or whatever, uh-huh. some other uh, investment, yep. it doesn't get passed on to your children. They don't go, oh, nope, you lose- your daddy paid... Uh, all this money for, you know, 50 years. And unfortunately, he died the year before he was actually eligible to get it. So therefore, it rolls over into his family members or his next of kin. Except, nope. Right. <laughs> That's not, So, like, I, I started kind of going through this and, and I kind of went back and I did, look, I got a few notes. Um, I, you I, always got notes. This dude is like, no, like, like, I got like, you were the good kid what, in school, what? weren't you? Oh, no. You were like, <laughs> I had to sat grow up, up and front. Did, I had to teacher grow. was like, you, before she finished asking the question, you raised your hand, you had the answer. You're oh, like, clearly you were not around at all. Because I, I will tell you this that, like, I did, after I graduated, I, I which graduated, um, oh. I did a semester of college, like, right after. Mm hmm. It didn't go well at all. Not at all. Right. So I went back to school when I was 31. Wow. And going back at 31, whole different outlook on it. Right. Just completely, like I was focused. And I actually did pretty well. I did pretty well in college because I, I was older, had my focus. Right. I'm like, dude, I'm paying for this. And yeah, I'm right. going to put some, I'm going to get into this a little bit. I did pretty well. So right. I, as a student in high school, nah, that just, so I, anything I have in research wise, that was not because I was a kid and raised up in it. It's because I'm just grown. So I got you. Here, here's the thing. You started looking at it and you go, okay, when FDR started it, like what, what was the purpose behind it? Like, mm-hmm. that's what I kind of wanted to look at. Yep. Like, well, why did, why did government get involved in helping people retire basically? And, and so what I learned through some reading that I actually did some reading too. And so what I know is that kind of week, actually this was last week. We had this ready to go last right, week. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so in the reading that I found, here's what they were actually trying to do. They were trying to actually force the older people out of the workforce and put the younger ones in because mm-hmm. it wasn't, it was, it was not uncommon that the older people would just keep working and working and basically they died. Right. Taking up jobs. And so what this was, crazy old people working and stuff like that. And and so um, what they were doing is they were truly just trying to shift the age of the workers and try to get, which is then kind of funny. You bring all these people now who are younger, they're going to keep paying into this. Mm -hmm. And that was the premise of it. The premise is we had so many people that were paying into it and so few taking out of it. Right. So it it was financially stable if you want to get that way. Okay. Right. It, it would have lasted, but it didn't stay on that way. Right. And so now we see, now we're running into that area where it's flipping the other way, mm-hmm. where it's not near as many people paying into it that are pulling out of it. And it's about to go crazy here in the next few years. Where right. Always oh, all the boomers, right? Is it, is it the boomers? Is the boomers are all the ones that fix to come into retirement? Yeah, basically. I can, or, never, or I can never keep those the, the, Yeah, they should be right. They should be going into retirement. They're going into. Because I'm Gen X. 
Okay. And Gen X is not yet ready to go into retirement. Yet no. And... Because I'm only 43. Okay. So, and, and there's no way. I think retirement's that... like 65, right? Or 66. Yeah, actually, like that. That, yeah, because right now I actually or... I have that in my notes because it keeps getting changed. It keeps yeah, getting they keep, raised. They're like, oh, people want to live longer? Well, here. We'll Watch just... it. We'll fix that problem. All right. So, um, so here's what I looked at. Let me know when you want to chime in because I have more. Go ahead. I, I am doing something real quick okay. just to double check All on right. something. So, so here's what was happening. So, so I started looking at it. And I go, okay, it's it's 6.2% of your pay mm -hmm. goes into Social Security. So here's the thing. The actual amount is 12.4% right. that goes into Social Security. What happens is your employer takes the other 6, you know, the employer takes the other 6.2, you take 6.2, and they all pay into Social Security. Right. And, and so what can happen then is if you're self-employed along those lines, you pay all of that. Right. You pay all of the 12.4% into mm -hmm. social security program. And so I'm kind of like, wait a minute. Um, so that's great, but now they've forced me and what could I be using that money towards that could be better served towards right. my own retirement? And you know what's funny is remember when uh, George W. Bush was in office and he tried making a run at this. He tried making a run at, hey, let's do something with social security. Let's do something to change it. Mm -hmm. He tried saying, hey, let's make it so we can privately invest. He caved completely. He had a great opportunity. Failed it miserably. But at least what he was trying to do was say, okay, why don't we just reduce the amount that goes into Social Security and allow the people to take that difference right. and put it wherever they want to put it in. And, and I think that the idea itself was okay, but now we start running into the idea that these people are living longer. Um, there's people, the boomers are getting ready to retire. There's mm -hmm. less people paying into it. Right. And it actually is showing now that in 2033, it starts falling negative. Hmm. People smarter than me figured out this is probably the date, right. roughly. You know, there was when... some number that I saw when I did a little uh -huh. research as well, and I should have kept the notes. But they were talking about like ten years ago or something like that. Yeah. So many years ago, it was like one person required so many people. Yep. It, like one it was person, like four to one. Well, now it's like four. So it was huge when it first started. It was it, like well, the the gap was smaller, it's smaller. And yep. it, but it was bigger. It's bigger. Uh, I think it's. I think it's. I got that right. So I think it was something along the lines of like, for every one person that receives Social Security, this many people need to be working and paying yep. into it. Mm -hmm. And that number was relatively like one for ten, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's like one for two fifty or something. It, it. I mean, it's it jumped. It's yep. huge. Um. And so it was. It's just very interesting to to see like and, the the stats over and bear time. And when they do that, they're assuming they're running those numbers based on the fact that the workforce stays at this level. Right. What happens with the workforce? What happens when the government keeps handing out money to people right. and they no longer work? They're no longer giving into that program. Right. So that means that number is going to change even more. It's right. going to be more people are needed right. in order to to pay that off. Yep. And so yeah, I, I you know I think this is I think there's all I mean, you could just go in any number of different directions and say. This was a bad idea did, for yeah. this for this reason, this and, reason. And I think the yeah. thing that makes it so bad is we can't opt out. Right. Like like th this is truly theft. Right. You don't have it. We are taking this from right. you, even right. though there's a high chance. And if you don't live. Now here's the problem. Okay, this is real life, whether we want to address it or not, but the black community tends to really get it stuck to them as far as social security. Mm -hmm. They will pay into it. And many times the black community doesn't live to that, especially mm -hmm. black men, they don't live to that age of retirement. Right. And, and you're like, so they're taking advantage of them. They're forcing them to pay into a system that they kind of know right. you're not going to get anything out of this anyway. And, and like I said, not to bring up race issues inside, but that's a reality right. of it. And we also have to look at many people that do pay into it their whole life. They don't like my right. parents. My parents are two examples of people who paid into it during that whole time and they got nothing at all out of it. And so my complaint is that, okay, maybe the social security idea isn't bad, but give us a choice. Right. Give us the chance to either we can pay into it and do this this right. way, or we can opt out. Yeah, there was a there were, uh, somewhat related. There was an episode of Doctor House. Remember the show Doctor House? Oh yeah. So there was an episode of Doctor House where he had a, a black man in as a patient, and he was going to give him a certain drug or something. And the black man was like, "No, I want I want the drug you give white guys." And he was like, Th "This is the right drug," and 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 he you know he was like, "This is the right drug that you need." Mm -hmm. And he's like, "There is no white person drug," and so the guy kept arguing with him. And then finally he was like, okay, fine. Didn't he, I just say, didn't he do he's, the thing where he tricked him and like, oh yeah, this is the... He's like, fine, here are the ones that we give Republicans or something like that. <laughs> and then he said, I think he said something sharp to the guy because he was like, you want to stick it to the white man, live a long Longer. time. He said, take the drug and live a long time. It's something like that. Uh-huh, that's legit. And, <laughs> and you, know, you, you know, you mentioned that the demographic 
uh, you know, black men tend to not live as long, so they tend not to get this money mm -hmm. that's been or even taken they, say from they them. don't live as long to really recoup everything they put into right. It. Mm -hmm. And so, so they don't they they don't live long enough to necessarily get the money that has been forcibly taken from them. Let's mm -hmm. you know what here, libertarians. Let's do this. Stop saying money that you put in to Social Security, because people aren't putting in money. It's being taken, taken. from them. By force. Mm -hmm. This is money that's been stolen from me and put into this account that some people, they don't get access to because they don't live long enough or they get to the age of 65 and then the government's like, oh man, looks like people are living longer. We better raise this to like 67 that's actually, or whatever. They, yeah, like 66 and a half. Is it, they, like they choose, like they'll do usually incremental like six months. Right. You know, they kind of, but they keep getting there. And, and that's actually, that's the problem. So they started trying to say, they started looking at it realistically and they start going, oh, this isn't going to last. Right. Like this is not going well. And so what they tried doing is, you, you, um, they're talking about they can raise the tax level because mm -hmm. they only cut it to a certain amount of income and then after that you don't have to pay extra into social security you'll right. pay up to this point so they talk about they raise that tax level which they've done they, they raise the amount of what you earn to what mm -hmm. you pay the taxes on to pay right. social security um and then um they raise the age they raise the age they've done that a number of times they'll raise right. the age that you don't get there um so the question becomes and like what they kind of do now they have a level of they decrease the benefits mm -hmm. you know you don't get as much as you used to in a sense from social security stuff along those lines so i guess the question becomes how what can we promote? Because we are not going to fix it. Right. Like we're not they're not gonna call us up to Washington and go, guys, what were you what were y'all saying? I so mean what can honestly, we that would actually be better than what we have now. Well, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But let's be what, what I just said, they're not going to. No, they're not going okay. to, but I mean So know. what what are okay. options then? As as quickly as we can, I guess. Like what do we say is a way that we go, okay, how do we fix this? Is, is opt out just the only answer? So do I have, I don't have a full fledged, you know, thought okay. out answer necessarily, but I think that we could start offering some options like, Hey, we're going to allow people to opt out. If you want to opt out, then, um, you know, and, and you could put stipulations on it. You could say like, look, you can only opt out up until this date because you've been putting money in or something like that. Okay. No, actually, you know what? You should be able to opt out at any time you want. You should have a limitation on what, if you wanted to opt in or even better yet okay since we're talking about opting out opting in uh -huh. maybe the default is opting out and then you have to opt in you have to reach them and say i want to be a part of this program. and i want to be a part of this program and i want you to you know take this money and make all the decisions for me on what this money should do right like I, and, and that's basically what you're doing mm -hmm. you're basically saying government will you be my financial planner right um if, if that's least, not wise but yeah i mean i mean it's, yeah that's basically what's happening and um and then there's a certain limit under which like hey you can't opt in until a after this age because you're not putting you in, enough in you're not putting enough you know for us to yep. you know you can opt out at any time and if you opt out you lose the money right oh okay i i think that'd be okay why because it's you know you're opting in and out so it's it's very voluntary um, right. And then it incentivizes people not to opt in in the first place. So, <laughs> right. So let me ask you a question then. With that real quick, if people start saying, I'm out, dude. Right. What do what do we effectively do to the people who have paid in all this time? And let's say they're a year away, two years away from getting, are um, they currently getting it? I, I, do, I do think we need to make a consideration on that because, okay. because even though it's been forcibly taken from people, it's been forcibly taken. And then at the same time, people were told, you will get this money. Mm -hmm. You will have these benefits when you get to be this particular right. age. So I think the government would probably be best to say, all right, look, if we're going to wean, we, as much as we might like to just say, cut off Social Security and get rid of it, it's, that's not going to happen. There's just three, there's 320 million Americans. Many of them are dependent on this money right. because they, they've, it's been taken from them. They've been assuming. And in their mind, they, they played right, in the idea, I'll get this I'll, money. I will have this money. Yep. So I, th I, I think the, the, the libertarian response that is appropriate would be to say, um, to advocate for a government that maybe has stages and say, all right, if you're between these later ages, right. then you're going to get the full benefits. If you're in this age, you're going to get 80%, 50%. Start planning and, accordingly. And, and then, you know, and then, hey, at but, this age, we're actually going to, we're actually not even going to include you anymore because, you know, you're 20, you you need to figure it out on your own. And that was kind of my thing. You, you, like, you let it run its course now. Right. You let the ones who are this age, all right, you're right. good, you keep moving forward. This age here, we're going to decline you back until, all right, you're this age, you're right. done. You know, so, now, where it's, does the money come from? Well, I mean, all these other topics that we talked about where we could cut funding, mm -hmm. you simply just cut funding from these. Like if we cut the military budget in half, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but I, if I remember correctly, it was a pretty big budget. If we cut it in half, um, then I think we would have plenty of money that we could sustain the remainder of Social Security now, 
until it was no Before longer scaring a everybody out, because here's what they're going to say. Oh, can't get rid of our military. As soon as you said military, they're going to check out on you. Oh, that's not the way to fix it. Okay, what if we just cut back useless government spending? Just sure. You, just all right. these other things that they have. That would take I care mean, of all those also. All those bridges to nowhere? Yep. All that, you know, and you know how we do that? We're getting really complicated here, but that's okay. Okay. Um, We demand that our Congress read the damn bills that they saw. Oh, forget. It. Yeah. Because no, so no, I guess no, that was not going to happen. I guess we have so you started. Those, that was, that one's nowhere. That's it. That's a go I nowhere. Don't want to bridge to nowhere. But, there it but, is. But, but do, do, we, do you think this, all this ties together to why we have this program that doesn't, doesn't work. work because we we don't have people in leadership positions in Congress and, you know, and other, you know, other, other positions, but, whatever they're, they're not actually being held accountable for delivering results on these things. Mm -hmm. The only results that they deliver are, Hey, here's this new thing on paper that I've decided that's going to cost more money and you know, whatever. Remember, that's the bipartisanship. I said the other day, I said right. bipartisanship is when the two parties get together to spend other people's money. Right. That's when they come to... And but so so here's... Let me ask you this. Is it possible then that you can say, okay, listen, you're this age. Mm -hmm. We're going to buy you out. Like, whatever you put in, we're going to give you a percentage out. You're done. So that's how... We, I think there's how, some people that might do That's how we it. wean people off. I think... I, I think you... Uh, I, I, like, so, they might not give you all that you put into it, but they can say, hey, listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to buy you out so right. we don't have to deal with you anymore. We're going to give you... 10% of what you, right. whatever it is. Now you can either take it, spend it, reinvest right. it somewhere else, but now you're on your own. Right. And now you feel like you've got something like, okay, dip me out now. Right. As opposed to, because if not, we're, it's going to be hard to let it run its course and finish because at some point people are going to be paying into it. They're going to go, but I'm getting nothing back out of this. Right. You, you, well, you know I think saying? that's why you have this, the stages yep. because is so long as everybody that's just getting ready or getting close right. to that's retirement age. Like you don't want to stick it to them. They, then, they've earned it. Then you what you're going to have is you're going to have like these people need 100% of the money. But if you can start finding ways to reduce uh, how much people are going to get, mm -hmm. because if we say like a 60-year-old is going to get 100%, but a 50-year-old is going to get like, I don't 80. know, 80%, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's 20% that we no longer have to worry about put paying into them. And now, but now right. they have that freedom that right. they can put it in other places. And, and then if we start cutting the budget somewhere, wherever, it doesn't have to necessarily be the military. No, but, oh, but, there's plenty of but, places. There's plenty but, of but if places. If we start cutting the budget, but, but, then we don't need new taxes. And we can say, all right, now we're, we're going to take the taxes from where we were initially, you know, this budget where it was continually collecting mm -hmm. taxes right. for. Now it's going to be, Clinton, instead of that, it's going to be continually taxing. But, but like but, taxes for but the remainder even, but the, the, of social security. It's a remainder. And, that, and we have to understand that this is we're no longer just going to shift this tax money over to right. here. Pay for, no, no. We're doing this to pay this off to end this. Right. So we're going to pull. Here's what happens. That's a beauty. Because now we're no longer wasting the money over here, which means now it's going to get put over here. But pretty soon that's going to be paid off. So we right. paid off that debt. That debt we're not covering anymore. Right. Now we have extra so, money. So, so now know, we have money coming in that has no designated spot. Which you know, you know, you know, right. what, you know to me where that designated spot becomes. The people again. right, right. Then you, you start. Then you say, well, maybe we don't need these taxes, which the government would totally That's never not gonna say. Happen. Right. Okay. So in that perfect world that we'll talk about in a long time, the government so, will die. They will fall on that. So they will die on that hill. Most definitely. They will die so, on the hill of what are you talking about? We don't need that tax. So we understand Social Security is a nasty beast. It is, and what's and, worse is it is a Ponzi scheme, as he puts it out here, because you're basically saying I'm going to pay you with the money that I'm giving getting from somebody else. Which is like he says basically, but I feel like it's almost exactly a Ponzi. Remember, it's, I have to look up the formal so, definition. So, what was it? Peter Pan used to rob from the rich and uh, Robin Hood. give to the poor. Robin, no, yeah, I'm sorry, Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Robin Hood used to rob from the rich and give to the poor. And remember, Easy E said, "Hey, I steal from the rich and hang with the poor." So that's I don't remember him saying that, but I'm glad he's that because you, I'm not like Robin Hood because I want more. I steal. I'm from glad the rich that you have the street the cred to know about what Easy E said. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Wow, All right. All right, that's it. Listen, how oh, do you man. not segue to the next topic once we drop some easy? On I board? mean, this is, I like this, you know, like I didn't realize you were always a gangster. Pastor. I wasn't always a pastor. All right, all right, player. All right. <laughs> do we have another topic? My my homie, man. Like I tell you what, <laughs> you know, I guess we're going to have to be more flexible about the N word on this show now. No, no, no. know I, that you're I, a gangster I think, and all that. No, listen, even being one, I'm still not. I going mean, to. yeah, darkish enough. Uh, listen. What I say? I, I am I allowed to tell you what I now am identifying as? Like, remember I said, listen, I said, listen, I'm no. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Just so we should. I'm okay. not gonna, so just, what else we got to say about social security? I've just other than no, it won't be I'm there. Done. I mean, and it really should be a long conversation because there's not much longer. It's not gonna be around much longer anyway. Remember, because so. he's not gonna get it. Right. 
All right. So, folks, if you're listening, we're going to wrap it up on the can, Social Security. We're going to move on to the environment. Yep. Can I add, though, that you, you added he's not going to get it, and I added lyrics from Easy e Let's put it in there now. I won the segment. I mean, maybe, but nope, I mean, nope, at least nope, I nope, nope. Liberty Dad. No, nope, no. Nope. Listen, I, I won the segment. Liberty Gangster over here. <laughs> you going to see walk on my show, too? Like what? Going to do what? Okay. Well, now we found the white part of me. <laughs> well, what did you say? I'm going to what? Are you going to see walk? Crip walk. walk. Crip walk. It's like a dance. Oh, that thing that, like, what you call it does? Yeah, I can't do that. Okay. Nope. I'm no, not doing that. I mean, I figured nope, that out when it. you were like, see walk. See walk, like, what? What is that see walk? Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> what, what might you be referring to? <laughs> All right. So, no. The white came out of it really just, quick. Here. Can I say that? I, you know what? You know what? I'm Native American. I can say whatever I want. Because... That's not how that works. Yes, you it is. You still can't say things no, against me. If you're POC, then you can say whatever you darn well please. And everybody will be like, yeah, but they've been oppressed for a long time. Who was who was that comedian who used to say back in the day? He says, listen, he goes, talk about boxers. He goes, and the further you go down in the scale of minorities, he says, they, the better the boxers become. And so he's talking about, I think at the time he was talking about like uh, Mike Tyson. And he goes, somewhere right now there's an American Indian just waiting to kick his ass. I'm like, all right, there you go, dude. That's hilarious. That's nothing to do with right. either. So, so there's not much left to say on Social Security. Ultimately, it was a, it's a bad idea because we, it's very clear just by anybody that it's really not sustainable. And if there's, like, if there's any argument to be made about something that the government shouldn't be doing, anything that's not sustainable, they should definitely not be doing it. Like, like this is just, it was a terrible idea. They're taken from one person to give to another on the presumption that 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 person that will be giving it to them will will be uh, consistently there to give it to them, right? And that the people that are getting it will not become too numerous to outnumber those who are giving, which is exactly what's mm -hmm. happening. Right. So we have a lot of people that are getting ready to retire and they're going to be looking for a paycheck that they have had uh, for, for, uh, from a pool of money that was taken from them mm -hmm. against their will. And, th and they could have done many other things. And let's just be honest. I mean, since we're, we're being honest, if you're if, if there are many people that die before they ever get it. Yes. So since they were going to die anyway before they were going to get it. They might as well have at least gotten all their money. And they could just spend it accordingly. And they could have they spend it, it however they wanted. Yep. Had that much their better like, They could take that money just left it to their kids. Who knows? They might have been able to live long enough to not get the money. Or whatever. But the point being that the government made a choice for people and they took money away from them and that they weren't able to use that money ever. Right. Ever. ever. They never got to see it. So all it really became for them was a tax. It was. There was no, because there was no benefit of it. There was after no that. benefit. No, nope. it, it was it was a tax benefit that they never received yep. any any uh, value. So it wasn't even a retirement plan. It was a nope. tax. Correct. So this okay. is why Social Security was always a bad idea. So um, that that's what we got to say. So if you're a libertarian, these are the kind of things that you might want to focus on when you're talking to people about Social Security, right? Don't necessarily focus in on taxation and theft. We get that. We understand it. But what you really want to talk to people is like, is this really a good program that people should be supporting from their government? A program that that even its proponents are saying like, yeah, we it's not really working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when the proponents are like, like it's not yeah, really working, you know. that kind of says something. So, and then if you're a non-libertarian, you're like, hey, I wonder what the libertarians think about Social Security. First and foremost, we think that taxation is theft. But more importantly, when we start looking at it, we say this is why it's theft. Because you're taking from somebody um, you know, who may not want you to take it from. Mm -hmm. And then in the, in the worst case scenario. And then using it for something you didn't want to, you would have used it for in the first place. And the worst case scenario is they never even get the service that it's supposed to be right. paid for. So like it's, a, it, it's, it's just a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea. Way. It's a horrible idea. So we're going to move on to the environment. Look, straight into two topics. Just like two topics. That. We're just we're flowing through, man. We're like, man, watch how ready. fast. Watch how fast I'm gonna be with this one. Ready? Yeah. Bam. Bam. Ooh, that's a lot. You know so what? There might be more in his notes in this one than I have to say. Oh boy. All right. So here's what he says. Here again. This is from the book. Bam. So got the book. Environment. Most Americans care about the environment. I think they do. Did you ever notice how it's the government-owned property that is the most polluted? Who owns the lakes, rivers, roadsides, and most air emission rights? Hmm? Eliminate the EPA and treat pollution like a trespass. Marker-oriented reforms will provide a cleaner environment at lower cost. Tub, what you got to say about this? Hang on, let me. See. Did I mistype something or that, what? That's 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 what I'm. He's, he don't, you don't trust my transcribing? Uh, I'm just looking at something. Um, 
Yeah, as I say, it's market. Market or Oh, did I write reform. marker? <laughs> that's why you put marker. I'm like, I'm like, what did I? The I'm R like, and the T are next to you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So when you read that, I'm like, wait a minute, marker. And I'm like, wait a minute, did I miss something? Because I thought I said market or. When okay. I read it, it sounded kind of weird because I was like, marker. marker I was like, okay, oriented. well, I'm like, maybe there's a couple little plaques somewhere. I was like, <laughs> hey, here's the plaque. Here's. I was like, doing. Tub's gonna we're, have. We're killing air pollution. Here's a plaque. We're and like done. and like that, I fixed. It. Done. Okay. So, uh, so now it says market oriented reforms will provide a cleaner environment. You know, I was just like, man, I don't know what that means, but maybe Tubble will know. Yeah, I did. I know that you typed it wrong. All right. So inside of that, uh, listen, I'm not. Okay. This is going to sound horrible, but right there it says most Americans care about the environment. Let me tell you, I don't. Well, that's why I said most, not all. Like, I, like I, to be honest we with you. We knew there were aberrations. Uh, and here it is. <laughs> so, like, 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 I look. I, I don't get worked up about it. Right. I, I, I don't. Uh, they're, they're moving. All right. I'm trying to be as nice about this as I possibly can. Now, when people tell me, hey, they recycle, they do all this, I don't care. Like, I don't like, right. you're stupid and you ought not to be. I don't, I don't care. Right. Like, I, you do whatever you want. Like, if I go to people's houses, I, I've even asked you, I'll come right. up with stuff. I'm like, hey, you recycle. And of course, for a little while, they're like, mm -hmm. no, nobody's recycling because, you know, right. and, and, and isn't it odd that recycling is so important, but yet they can get rid of it once so easily right. during that time. Right. So I, I don't have a whole lot about like recycling because recycling i learned that i don't separate any of my stuff because i learned they separate it anyway like you understand mm -hmm. that even the recycle stuff they still have to go through and separate it right um so i kind of look i go it's all just kind of getting by and, and um here's what's happening is it's just we are paying the taxes still as we mm -hmm. start doing their work okay it used to be you paid those taxes they separated it right now all of a sudden they go hey wait a minute we can still so, make them pay, but we're going to make them separate it. So now this sounds this very like terrible, guys, because he's like, oh, my God, I hate the environment. And I just go and do my oil changes right in the middle of the park. I didn't do my own oil changes. Don't worry about this. So let's get done right. I my just, oil changes get done I right. Unscrew I unscrew it and just let just it Just let it drain. Do right an AC the... unit, break the line, shove it in the ground. So, um, but uh, so let me ask you then. Yes. You don't separate your, your recyclables. Nope. Uh, but you you do pay a tax for your, your waste removal. Yes. 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 So let's say you weren't paying a tax uh -huh. and you had to pay a private company to remove it. Let's just right. say it was uh, $10 a month. Okay. I don't know how much. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Plus $10 a month. And they came to you and they said, if you separate your recyclables, we will charge you only $5 a month. Okay. Would it incentivize you to do it? No. Here's $10. Okay. You separate it for me. Okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. Like, like I said, I'm not against, I'm not against people doing it. I, like, I'm right. fine. I, I just, I don't want to. Yeah. I'm not going to rinse out cans. I'm not going to rinse out. If, they and still and do and that. If, they want to in the back of the day to rinse out And if they cans. charged you an extra $10 a month, double, uh -huh. would you still? Yeah, yeah, I'd probably look at that as that's still 10 bucks worth paying. Okay. Like, if they're, because here's what they're saying. They're saying we have to separate. This is what we have to do. Right. Okay. I just won't do it. Right. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not against people who do it. If I got to pay so an you extra don't mind paying extra? No. Okay. So that's exactly that last line. Market-oriented reforms will provide a cleaner environment at lower cost. Now, wait a minute, D.L., wait a minute. He didn't recycle. How He didn't separate them. How does that provide a cleaner environment? Because he paid more money yep. for somebody else to do the work. Mm -hmm. He was willing to pay more money for it. Or for some people, like say myself, right. I would probably, because for me, it's relatively easy. I'm going to the trash anyway. Right. I have a trash can that's like the little blue bin or whatever. Yeah. And I just, you know, if it's a, a can or something like that, just toss it right over there, mm -hmm. call it a day, right? And so for me, I would be willing to take, uh, I would be willing to pay less or not pay an additional fee to, you know, and actually separate my stuff. Okay. Right. And so this is the point that we're trying to make is that the market oriented reforms will provide a cleaner uh, environment at, all co at lower cost. Okay. And so right now the city charges you the same amount that it charges me. We recycle because we're good human beings that love the planet that the creator has given us and we understand but i also understand that the, at the same time when god gave us all that i also understand that he made some people that's their job and so by me not separating it allow somebody to keep working so i am the one who truly cares about other people because i want them to maintain their employment and take care of their families so who really cares more it's the guys like me who are not separated so that guy right can keep his job but you, you jokes. are welcome to all the ones who work in the waste management positions. I want you to understand. I clearly support you and right. your homes and your right. families. I care. So the broader point that I'm making, oh, of yes. course, but you is, know, I mean, jokes can, aside, the, the point that I'm making is that you and I pay the same amount of money. Yeah. Right. Or I mean, r roughly. Yeah. I don't know if there's any kind of 
scale of any kind. Because my neighborhood is that what you're saying? Like, you're no, no, that like your neighbor's nicer than mine. No, no, so... no. I don't. I don't know if they like. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't know I don't how they charge. Said, I, don't... I don't know if it's a flat fee or not. I don't right. know. Um, but I, I know that we basically pay about the same amount of money. Right. And that money does not incentivize it. It's not the money that's incentivizing me. It's my wife who's incentivizing me to uh, to separate the recyclables. Okay. And for you and your household, nothing is incentivizing you, <laughs> no, right? Nothing. So, nothing so it doesn't get done. To a more positive direction, right? right. So, so the the government is providing the same service at the same cost, and it's doing it's doing nothing to incentivize anybody. Nor is it paying additional for people who are cho- who have chosen like you know that's not enough for me because there is probably a cost at mm-hmm. which you'll say. I'll do that's it. That's enough. Yeah, like that's what I said. Like you're you're going from ten to twenty I'm like a month. Right. I don't care. Right. Now if you go say, hey, it's gonna be ten dollars or hundred and fifty. Right. Well, then I might right. start going, where's that bucket gonna be? Right. <laughs> you, right. you know, right. like I might be a little more but that's right. up to people in what they decide. Right. Because once again, they, here's my question though. And here's the part where I, I did have something I'm kinda like, well, you know, I'm looking at this and I go, what we're talking about is just trash. Right. Now, I to me, I don't think when they mention environment, that's just trash. I think right. it's bigger issues also. I, I think that you, you talk about, you know, like water and stuff mm-hmm. like that, water uh, purity. And, and so what ha- the, the part that I'm struggling with a little bit, there's been a history of, we'll say factories, for example, mm-hmm. uh, manufacturing that dump stuff right. into rivers and stuff along those lines. Right. Aaron Brockovich. Yes. Okay. And, and so, um, so that, that, that points there and they say, Hey, listen, here's what you've done. Here's the damage that you've done. Who will police that? So in a libertarian society, okay. when we, and I think we've talked about this before, you would end up seeing more litigation because what would happen is let's say that Tub and I were neighbors. Okay. We had sizable properties and behind us was a nice stream. And let's just actually, let's separate us. We're not direct neighbors, but he's like down the way a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so Tub is over here. I'm over here and I'm, let's just put you downstream from me. Oh, and so oh, that makes you the pollutant. Then. So okay, then every day, uh, yes, it makes me the pollutant. So every okay. day I come and I toss, you know, whatever into the, into the, you throw your cans and your banana peels right, and just right. whatever happens to me. Right. Right. And so then it flows down. Mm-hmm. And then maybe for whatever reason you get an impact in your area because right. of the the layout and whatever. Yep. Right. So you start seeing some Im- some effects on your portion, if you will. Fish are dying. The, uh, it's fish blocked are dying. up water or stuff along right. those lines. Stuff like that. Unnatural dam. Like you have uh-huh. to go out and you have to clean up my trash. Yep. Right. So then you have a claim against me because you basically are looking at it and saying, "Look, DL, you're you can destroy your pro- property." But once it starts seeping out beyond your property and affecting mine, now I have a claim against you. Okay. And this is how uh, this this is how uh, pollution actually works, right? So, like, let's say that I'm constantly um, burning stuff. Maybe I maybe I'm a, a, a company and yep. I'm burning stuff, mm-hmm. and then the air is really polluted, and you 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 uh, downwind, you, for example, you, you're downwind, just... and you're you're suffering breathing problems. You have a you have a um, a, com- a, a valid complaint against this person because you're like, hey, you're destroying the air that I okay. have to breathe. So even though, so th- this this is where people like make their mistake and they think that libertarians really don't care uh, about the environment. And I don't mean in the in the sense where you said it, because you care about your environment uh-huh. very much. You would not allow me oh, no. to come and destroy your property, uh-huh. and so you wouldn't allow me to do it directly. And in the libertarian society, I wouldn't be able to do it indirectly, indirectly either, right? So I would have to pay for that. And so the threat, in very much the same way that the threat of uh, being punished for damaging your property right, uh, directly keeps me from doing it, right? So what are you saying? It would also keep, it would also prevent me from doing it indirectly in as much as you could expect. But you're saying that's simply based off of litigation. Here's the problem the with that. Threat. It's the, the threat, really. So it's just it's the really, threat of litigation? Yeah, it's really it's really a threat. Like the I reason mean, what, people oh, but no, see here's why that won't work. Because once again, what what is the thing libertarians always say? It's it's legal for a price. So what right. happens when a company's big enough and they go, I don't care, I'll pay him his hundred thousand dollars. I'm just gonna keep doing this. You're saying what happens at that point right there when you say because litigation, so threat of litigation might not do anything. I don't care. Litigation might not. Here's why. So I, I think, I think what's, 
I, I think that assumes that there's a certain price that the company knows that they will have to pay. But I'm saying even if you go into litigation though, because once again, litigation is a risk. Right. Because you got to deal with a jury, you got to deal with a judge, you got to go through all of those things. Right, they right. might go, no, you get nothing. So now here's what happens: you went to litigation, you lost. What happens? You lost. So now it's still happening, right? And you're not getting anything um, to make it right. I, I I I think what we have to take into consideration is that when we talk about litigation or a civil claim against yep. somebody else in a libertarian society. We have to also recognize that there's an entirely different paradigm that's understood by the population at large, which means right now it's not really a thing. Like we don't really think in terms of like, I have a claim against you, right? It's like we kind of do, but we kind of don't because we usually look and say, well, were you following the law? Yeah, mm -hmm. If you were following well, the law, law then... then maybe I don't have a claim right. against you, or maybe my claim is weaker, mm -hmm. right? But in a libertarian society, you it, you wouldn't have these laws, and so you would have a lot more strength to the claims that somebody comes to bring against you. So those claims would be stronger in the first place, right? What was and, it? And, and what, so what... we would be operating in a different in different but environment I, I altogether. That, I, but I think that once again, you leave a lot at risk. That you run the risk of getting nothing. I, I, and that keeps I think going. your risk changes. So your risk changes in that in that in this paradigm. What, what if there was a what if there was a level uh, of oversight? There was mm -hmm. there was a group that says no, this is our job, and we enforce this. That, that but you could what, totally have that. But what if it's not government? It's a right. private company, and a private company says, okay, this is what we do, mm -hmm. and our job is to go around and it's these companies right. and we can fine you or do whatever you know basically the same premise that the government like from like, our regulations episode yes the idea is okay your intentions might be okay like i think right. if, if they look at hey listen we don't want you guys just dumping stuff in the river this mm -hmm. is a bad idea it destroys right. everything i think it's like i don't want that either i want to make that very clear when i say right. i don't care about the environment it's like i don't care if people are dumping stuff in the river right. i'm not worried about my recycling yep. so in so, the, yep, so right. here's what happens so if now if you have that and, and there's no longer the government because we just realized that government mismanages and wastes money for everything. Right. So now if that goes to a private company right. that they then say, okay, we're watching you. We hold you responsible. Right. We're, hold, we're held accountable because of who we are. And, and so I think that maybe then we can find something that works better than Possibly. trusting the government. Possibly. But somebody still watch, I'm not against the idea of the watcher, right. the one that says, hey, y'all can't do this now. So in the same, so in our regulation episode, we talked about you might have something like a, uh, uh, what's that company that we're gonna, uh, the, the, the Consumer Reports. Yeah. And they go out and they test, you know, they test a keyboard and they say, this is a really good keyboard. We rated a, you know, a nine mm -hmm. out of 10, right? And, you know, here's here's all the details of, of our rating and why we rated it at this level, right? And so then I know like, hey, I, I trust this Consumer yep, Reports I trust them. and I'm going to yep. buy this keyboard knowing that, you know, it got a good quality rating and yep. then I, you know, maybe I paid Consumer Reports for their, uh, for their reporting. Right. In the same way you could have somebody that's, that, um, uh, y you know, you pay mm -hmm. and they test the air around your house. They test the blah, 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 whatever. And so they don't necessarily have any control over an entity. So like they would, in the scenario of you and I, mm -hmm. they wouldn't necessarily be able to go onto my property and test my water necessarily, but they could test your water and then say, Hey, there's something going on because your water is not as clean. And if, and if like the person passed me, they were testing their water and they said, well, that person's water is clean, but your water is not clean. Then they could say somewhere between these two points, this water is not clean. Right. It looks like you have a claim against one of your neighbors in between because you should be expecting a lot fresher water or right. whatever. The case whatever happens be. to be. Yeah. Right. And so you could have a third entity involved exactly how that would be. How that would play out, I'm not entirely certain, but you could have an entity where basically society or maybe maybe in smaller pockets, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe in a particular city, you know, when I come and move and I buy a home, I buy a home and, and then somebody recommends and says, here are the three different watchdog services that you have available, right? Because right? there's no regulation, there's no government, right? So we don't have government rules on environment, but they could say, here are the three different watchdogs and here, uh, you know, uh, this watchdog is relatively brand new, but these other two are well established, and uh, you, you know they've they've got a. But what will know. they ultimately do? They're just going to watch and complain. It depends. It depends on the makeup of the society. So this is what makes it very difficult about the libertarian position because we're kind of reimagining almost an right. entirely new society. Yeah. So part of it also has to say, like, how do we get from here to there? Yes. Right. Because 
I personally don't believe that we can just rip the Band-Aid off because unless everybody became libertarian, that would work. But if everybody's not libertarian, ripping the Band-Aid off no is not going to work. Now we're no different than the Republicans and Democrats. Because, so we're gonna because what's going to happen is you're going to rip the Band-Aid off and a lot of people are going to not like that. And right. they're not going to be willing to wait until the, the wound heals, right? So let's take a look at so, this. Who owns the lakes, rivers, roadsides, and most air emission rights? And it says the government own property is the most polluted mm -hmm. so we can start with saying maybe the government should have less property because they're the, that's they're the step biggest one polluters because uh -huh. they're the biggest polluters mm -hmm. all right so if we really care about the environment let's start with the biggest polluter uh, mom mom and pop down the road are not the biggest polluters collectively yeah. moms and pops are not the, the biggest big, polluters. right so we can start with government who is the biggest because they do own the lakes the rivers the roadsides and they keep it they don't they don't keep it very well right so i i think the, the so, answer is to start there i i want to I, i'm checking out of this conversation okay me too not in a bad way no because here's what i want to do i i, I want to put more thought into it i i, I want to put more thought into okay like because you know i remember we started saying we want to be able to come up with some good solutions we right. don't just want to complain we want to come up with solutions and i think we have an idea but in my mind i want to kind of go over this a little bit and kind of go okay how does that new entity mm -hmm. i want them to have some form of authority like in my mind i want them to be able to say you have to do this right because this is what the standard is i, I want to work on this more that's you fair. know what i'm saying like, no, that's fair and, and, it, and it's okay because there are many libertarians. So I, I'm kind of speaking in a more anarchist tone here. Mm -hmm. And and that's to say no government. Right. All right. And and, it, and that's not necessarily always, like I'm not necessarily an anarchist myself. I okay? can hit them in area. Um, I can hit them in areas. I can kind of sit in there. So, so we, can, we can discuss that in between, yeah. right? I mean, like yeah, libertarians don't. So if you're watching libertarians, like it may sound like, man, they just don't want any government, no rules at all. And there are some for th that, for, uh, for which that is yeah, true. Yeah, I, I don't fall into that area. Right? I don't generally fall into that kid, uh, area either. I am very sympathetic to the more anarchist view. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm very sympathetic to it. Um, but but where do we start on this? Like, how do we, if you're, if you're a libertarian who says, look, we just got to have at least a little bit of government, okay? And, and then, let me ask you a question. Then we start by saying, Government, you're the biggest problem. Yep. We need to resolve you before you worry about somebody else. It's very much like being on an airline, right? You put your mask on first. Yes. And before then you help somebody else. Yep. Because if you're sitting there struggling for oxygen, you're not going to be very good. Help them you're not going to be effective. You're yourself. And if you're a government who can't seem to maintain your own property, it's not really in, you're not really in a position to tell somebody else how they should maintain it. So, see, theirs. the biggest part of that is just get government out of the ownership and Correct. then watch how things change. Start there. Okay. Start there. All right. So, I, I want to throw more idea. Like, maybe we follow up at some point. Maybe somebody else can check in. If they comment, yeah. they comment on these Go things. Go ahead and comment. And comment. Then we'll, and like, maybe hey. we'll do a second episode one day. Uh, even if it's a brief follow up. We'll yeah, like, like, hey. This one person made a great comment. We're totally convinced. Bam, we're on board. Yeah. So, I, 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 wanna see, I want to see what it is that maybe there's some form of, I don't want it to be, just be a, in my mind. Right. I don't want it to just be a watchdog group. I, I want them to right. have some bite. Right. I want but them to be is, able to do something. This is a specific idea government. that he's looking for. But ultimately, we could still come together and say, yeah. look. Uh, oh, this is still market, that idea. More, Let's market, be very clear. Market-oriented reforms yep. will do something. We established that early on. Yep. We established that even somebody like Tub, who's like, ah, I don't really <laughs> care. Somebody like Tub. I'm just going to toss it all in the trash can and let them deal with it because I know they deal with it anyway. And why Why should I waste my time? Even Tub has a price. To, to, if they come, <laughs> and, and if we put it to the market and we say the market now is going to charge you to remove your trash and they say, look, we're going to charge you $50 a month versus five dollars a month or whatever mm -hmm. you know that could incentivize you yeah or they might say look we're only going to charge you an extra ten dollars a month and you might say you know it's worth it ten dollars to me and it might be worth it to them so they say hey hey we'll, we'll do that they don't mind because they start we'll realizing wait a minute we're getting we the extra money paying it because yeah. how many other people are going to make that same decision you know, right dude, i don't care right in fact how many people who are recycling now would go 10 bucks yeah. you're gonna take care of it okay yeah, right right uh -huh. and, and and that could go to employing more people yes it could because remember, right. I care about he does. He the cares companies about and their employment and their I families. I want there only to be robots out there working. Right. I want to replace everybody with a kiosk. They'll get everybody. Just wait, it's getting there. It's a kiosk for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so. not that's not our conversation here. All right, so I think I think we've. Uh, I'm I think follow we've, up. I, I we're gonna we, we will we're find gonna a way. Have to follow up on if this. I come up with ideas, I'll got, post them in the comments myself. Right, because we you'll gotta, post this next week, right? We, yep, yep. We got to get this. Uh, so, okay. So we're gonna need time for Tub to come around to being a libertarian on environment. That's how that is. But uh, <laughs> you know, I was thinking that maybe uh, we get you to understand the right way. But, My way. Uh, Remember, I care about. Uh, so companies. wrapping this up, Social Security, bad idea. 
It's basically taken from one to give to another on the hopes that both of them will be in sufficient numbers or in lower numbers enough to keep that system operating. Clearly, that has not been the case. I don't think it's ever been the case. And we know that there, I, I didn't provide the data, but there is a, a widening gap of how many people it takes to support somebody that is currently receiving the Social Security benefits. And it's also absolutely taking from people. And if you never receive it, then you're being stolen from and not even at least getting the courtesy mm -hmm. of getting the service that you were promised. So that in itself is a tragedy. Um, and that's saying it lightly. The environment. Uh, libertarians, we actually do care about the environment. We just tend to care about the environment that's around us. Tub very much is going to care about his property. Yes. And if my, and if me engaging on my property starts to damage his property, he's going to want to see some. He's going to he's going to want to have it resolved. But bear in mind, I'm like I said, I don't want right. the whole world to crumble. I just right, right, I'm right. willing to let even if I had to pay up for things right. to, to make sure it and, protects. And if he doesn't want to do something, he's willing to pay because we're moving to a market oriented solution. Yep. And so he would be willing to pay to allow somebody else to do it. So the choices for him would be either he do it himself or he pays somebody to do it. So that's that's basically it's going to get done. Yeah, yeah. Yep, it's going to get done. Just done. matter who's going to pay for it. Right. But right now, clearly, it's not getting done because the government is the worst, um, uh, the 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 biggest aggressor against yep. our environment. With that, we are going to be out. Where's my script? It's not up on the it's not up on the screen yet. You have right. an exit script. I got an exit script. Okay, let's pretend like is. I didn't say it. All right, go ahead. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook. Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me hate mail or love mail to e, uh, to Liberty Dad Podcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. And remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people, and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time, and I'm out.